What up everybody? Back again here with our geometry unit. Today we are talking about categorizing quadrilaterals. So let's shape up and see what we are doing today. Our objective today, today I will be able to categorize quadrilaterals in different ways by looking at the attributes of the quadrilateral. So we're going to be taking our knowledge from last lesson and going one step further with it during this lesson. So as always, we want to do some math vocabulary just so we're on the same page. Attribute, you don't need to write down again because we talked about it last lesson, but an attribute is a feature that describes a shape. When you categorize something, um, you're putting them into groups based on certain attributes. So we're going to be looking at the different attributes and then separating them into different groups. So let's categorize. Let's practice this skill. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some circles and we're going to categorize them based on different attributes. Okay. In other words, we're going to group them based on different attributes. And we're going to look at a couple different ways to do this. So here are my circles. And probably the first way that I noticed Okay, is I looked at color. Okay, color just pops to my eye, and I see that we have some blue. I see that we have some red, and then I see we have one yellow. So if I wanted to categorize them, I would put all the red together right here. I'd separate the yellow, and then I would put the blue together. Okay, because you so you can categorize these circles based on color. The second way I thought about was doing them by size. So I see that I have some large circles and some small circles and I could categorize based on that right I put all my large ones together and then I put all my small ones together okay so you can categorize based on color or size let's do one more let's categorize them based on what shape they have on the inside of them so I see some have a circle and some have a triangle so we can categorize based on that we could do circle triangle so this one has a circle inside my circle this one also has circles inside of it this one has triangles inside this has triangles that has triangles and this one has circles so now we've grouped them or categorized them based on the shape inside all of this leads me to my key thought which is you can categorize based on many different attributes we put these into groups based on color that was one attribute we put them into groups based on size. That was one attribute. We put them into groups based on the shape that was inside the circle. Okay, that's a different attribute. And there are a, at least a few other attributes that you could use to categorize these. So that's the important thing to take away from this into our lesson today is that you can categorize based on many different attributes. So for this I do question, it's asking me which of the following groups contains only quadrilaterals. So I'm looking for the group that was categorized based on the fact that they all have four sides. That's the attribute that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at each shape inside the group or set. And I'm going to say, okay, does it have four sides? That's the attribute that I'm looking for. Rectangle, yes. Four sides. Parallelogram, yes. Hexagon, no. So set A is not the group that contains four quadrilaterals. If you noticed what they did here though, they put two quadrilaterals right off the bat. Why do you ask yourself? Because the tricky old people that make these questions know that some people will not look at all four choices. You have to be vigilant, as Professor Moody would say, constant vigilant, and you have to look each shape in the group. You can't just look at the first one or the last one. You gotta look at all four. Okay. So again, here we have set B. We have parallelogram. That's a check. Trapezoid. Yep. Square. Yep. Rhombus. Yes. So all four of these, okay, were quadrilaterals. But let me just double check just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. I'll put a dot by that. Okay. Trapezoid. Yes. Rectangle. Yes. Pentagon. No. Rhombus. Yes. Okay. Again, they gave you three correct answers and one not correct answer. So you've got to look at all of the shapes inside of the group. Okay. And then the first one for set D hexagon right off the bat. I know that's not correct. So my answer for this question, 
Which one shared the attributes of having four sides and being called a quadrilateral? Set B. Let's take a, a look at another way they might try to ask you these questions, categorizing quadrilaterals. So our we do problem says, Miss Stazen sorted all the following shapes using a rule. What name could they give to the shapes that fit their rule? So here, they're actually kind of working backwards. They categorize these, and you're looking for the attribute that they used to do it. Kind of like going back to our circles, if you looked at them and all the big ones were in one group and all the small ones were in one group, you might say, oh, they categorize them based on size. That's what you're trying to do here. You're trying to find the rule that all four of these have in common that these do not have in common, all right? So what I would do is I'd go back to my attribute list that we made last lesson, and I'd start at the top. Are these polygons and these aren't? No, because all of them are closed shapes made with straight lines. So that rule doesn't fit, they're both polygons. So let's move down one. Quadrilateral, maybe they based them, maybe they grouped these based on four sides. Well, I see one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, oh, all of these have four sides. Well, that's good, but now we need to make sure that none of the shapes underneath does not fit the rule have four sides. Because if we say that the rules, they have to be quadrilaterals, then none of these can be quadrilaterals because we said they did not fit the rule. Well, right here, I have a trapezoid. This one has four sides. So my rule can't be being a quadrilateral, okay? Because I have quadrilaterals in both groups. So then the next one down would be parallelogram. Let's see if all these are parallelograms. Yep, I have op two exactly two pairs of opposite sides that will never meet. Yep, I have exactly two pairs of sides that will never meet if they continue to go. Yes, I see right here that I have opposite sides that are going to never meet if I keep going. Vocabulary word for that is parallel. And here I have another shape with the opposite sides that will never meet if they continue to go. So I know that all of these are parallelogram. So that's a possible rule. Let's make sure again that none of these fit. So here I have a five sided figure, a pentagon, so that can't be a parallelogram. So that one's a check mark, that's good. This is a triangle, okay, so that can't be a parallelogram because parallelograms have to have four sides, so that one's good. Let's check this one. Okay, well right here, I see a shape that has one pair of sides that will never meet if they continue to go. So maybe, but my other pair will meet if I keep going on forever and ever and ever. So this is not a parallelogram. So my rule then is, I was looking, I was categorizing shapes that were parallelograms. All of these shapes fit that rule, and none of these shapes fit that rule, which means that's the rule for the table. So let's do one more we do problem, because this is gonna be another way they might ask you these questions. And my question says, Dawn drew these shapes on her paper. Which of these could she put in the category rhombus? So I'm categorizing shapes based on the attribute of a rhombus, okay, so what are those? Well, I know it has to be quadrilateral, so it has to have four sides, okay? I know that it has to have four congruent sides, and I know that it was a parallelogram, right? The two pairs of opposite sides that will never meet. So these are my three attributes that a shape has to have to be categorized as a rhombus. Let's take a look at this one first. So this shape has three sides. So it doesn't even meet the first requirement. It can't be a rhombus because it's a triangle. It only has three sides. So you are out of here, okay? Let's check out this shape right here. All right, it has four sides. Ooh, it doesn't have four congruent sides though. It did have two pairs that will never meet, but it didn't have four congruent sides. So this shape is out of here, not a rhombus, all right? Let's take a look at this shape. It has four sides, so it meets that requirement to be a rhombus has four congruent sides, all the sides are the exact same, and it has two pairs of opposite sides that will never meet if they continue to go. So this, in fact, is a rhombus. We're gonna come back to that if you're confused in a second, all right? Here we have a shape, it has four sides, awesome. It does not have four congruent sides, so this cannot be a rhombus, so you are out of here, okay? And here we have our last one, four sides, four congruent sides, the op two pairs of opposite sides that will never meet, they continue to go, so you are also a rhombus. So some of you might be thinking, well, that's a square, not a rhombus. Well, 
it is also a rhombus because it meets all the requirements to be a rhombus. It has all the attributes that you have to have to be a rhombus, which leads us to our higher level thinking thought. There can be more than one way to name a shape. That's going to be very, very important as you get to more advanced math. Just because it looks like a square doesn't mean it's only a square. You can name it more than one thing. If we go back here, just because this looks like a square doesn't mean it can't also be a rhombus. If it meets all the requirements to be a rhombus, you can call this a rhombus or a square. Now that's a higher level thinking thought, so it's okay if you're not there yet, you will get there, but we always wanna push our thinking here at Instructabeats, which leads us to the challenge zone, all right? So here we have the same type of question. I want you to go ahead and pause it. Uh, try this one by yourself. If you're not there yet, you can do it with me as I go over it and we can make it another we do problem. But if you think you're ready, go ahead and push pause, solve it, push play, and then check your work. So hopefully you just paused it, tried the question, and now you're checking your understanding by going over it with me. So my first thing I wanna do, I'm looking for which shapes can always be called a rectangle. So which of these shapes always has the attributes to be called a rectangle? So let's write them down, okay? To be a rectangle, you have to have four sides. You have to be a quadrilateral, right? You have to have two pairs of opposite sides that never meet. So you also have to be a parallelogram, okay? You have to have four square corners, okay? And then also the opposite sides are congruent. All right, so we have a couple different things, a couple different attributes you need to have to be a rectangle. What, now what made this a little bit more challenging is I didn't put the actual picture of the shape you kind of have to visualize it, and that's gonna take your thinking to a whole nother level. So you might actually, the first thing you might wanna do is you might want to draw these out if you can't visualize it. That's a great problem solving strategy. So square, four sides, two pairs that never meet, four square corners, the opposite sides are congruent, so a square can also be called a rectangle. Parallelogram, four sides, two pairs that never meet, does not have four square corners, so you are out of here. Okay, we got the trapezoid, four sides. Ooh, it only has one pair of sides that will never meet. So it didn't even meet the second requirement. So you are out of here. Then we have the rhombus. It's got four sides. It's got two pairs that never meet. It does not have four square corners. So the rhombus also is out of there. And then obviously a rectangle is a rectangle. So which of those shapes can always be called a rectangle? a square, and a rectangle. So hopefully right. we push your thinking to a deeper level today. It's okay if you're confused, continue to get better. You're gonna continue to learn from your failure. If you need to go back and rewatch it, please do that. You can check out our other lessons or songs that will help you out. As always, we really appreciate you taking your time to watch Instruct the Beats. Please like and subscribe. We appreciate you. Thank you. Instruct the Beats, out.